Well, hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Uh, as we continue our boar corral project, um, we are putting the third leg in of our first paddock, but we've got this, uh, this little canyon, little Appalachian Canyon, if you will, to overcome. So stick with us and we'll show you how we're gonna try to get this figured out. Okay, so we're coming down off the side of the mountain, side of the hill. Again, you flatlanders say my hills are mountains and you mountain people say my mountains are hills. But uh, we're coming down here and we've got this watershed that I, I want to cross over. I don't want to, I don't want to follow the side of it because it just makes my, um, my paddock is already triangular shaped and that would actually make it come down to too much of a pinch. I want to be able to get them to the bridge, which is behind me. So that's our goal is we want to come down basically to where Liam is. Okay. So what we've got to do is, is of course, fill this gap and I can only drive poles down so far because most of this is stone. So we're gonna set some poles where we need to and then make like a wire fence curtain. I've done that, I did that a couple years ago in a previous video, uh, but we're gonna do that again here and see how well that works. All right, so what we have here is, due to all the stone, we have what looks like a messed up entrance to Baghdad with our cross T-posts here. And I've got this irrigation hose, this black hose, that is just maybe twice the, the inside diameter, probably twice the outside diameter of my 14 gauge wire. So it fits over nice slides, but it's not too floppy and loose. So I'm putting this here simply as spacers. So I've got a piece that spans my insulators. And what I'm gonna do is about every, arbitrarily, every couple inches, I'm going to just sever the, uh, the hose. Bless you. So I'm just putting some brakes in it there.
and put it back on our insulator. Get some tension on it. Stick my hand in the briars. And then I have um, have a bunch of this galvanized wire. This is actually the wire that you would uh, use for a suspended ceiling. Like you have in your basement, all those big tiles and you gotta have the little track in it. Well, that's what this is. It's just a whole bunch of this um, left over from a project somebody did and gave to me. So it's galvanized, which is nice, just like the fence wire. And I'm gonna make it almost like a little curtain. So we're just gonna cut pieces to length Actually, we're going to get tension on our wire here first so I can have a good judge. So hang on one second. So now that we've got, now that I've got tension on this, I can take a uh, measurement. Don't poke my cameraman in the eye with this wire. I'm just bending a little hook loop in it. <laughs> there so that'll hang and what we don't want it to do is obviously hang touching something so I can either bend an end up or cut it short and the whole purpose of the pipe the the rubber tubing is simply just to make a spacer if it didn't have that then it would all just slide down to one end over time since it's not perfectly level or slide to the middle or slide wherever a lot of sliding. All right, so I got all those on there and then just crimp them down so they kind of stay in place. Obviously the idea is as water and debris come down the watershed here, they obviously just hit this and make it swing and uh, not be too much of an obstruction. But the pigs, when they come up and they touch it, you know, there's no physical barrier that obviously keeps them from going this way or that way, but it's just the pain associated with the electricity. Once they do it a couple times, they know where it is and, and should avoid it. Uh, like I said, I've had it on my other creek crossing for about three, three or four years now. This worked quite well. I did have a bunch of logs come down one time. I actually got cramped, so it curved everybody. So I had to go back and straighten them up. But this should work and uh, keep everybody where they need to be for a while. All right, so we got our third leg of our triangular paddock in place and came down here to terminate at our trotter bridge, which is what we're calling this now, instead of a pig foot bridge. And I've got my pole gate in place and still trying to work out some of the details here. But we've got pretty much everything closed in. Our creek crossing, a um, couple little areas we got to figure out. So let me show you those. Okay, so this is the line coming down the mountain, the electric line. Uh, termination T-post here. Got our tensioner, got our donuts. Of course, we're not uh, electrifying our T-post. So this is where I was going to stop electricity. And the gate is on this four by four you see behind us or actually to my left you're right this wire is just a tensioning wire to obviously give the uh, four by four post support so the gate doesn't make it sag so clearly i got to fill in this gap i'm really debating whether or not just using some slabs to make a just a, a, a corral wall something just to impede them i'm, I'm hesitant to put electric there because I, I really want them to navigate this bridge and this gate and if they're freaked out by electric, then they won't get that close. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm going back and forth. They, they get pretty close to electric. If you'd see our paddocks, you'd see how they graze right up to the very edges of them. So um, I'm still debating that. So that's issue number one. So the next feature we put in, and again, I know pipe gates are not going to stop pigs. Nothing's going to stop a pig if he really wants to get out. But the pipe gate is more of a directional piece. So... Again, if I'm if I'm standing here, this is paddock one. Over here would be paddock two. So the idea was to have two pasture paddocks that still have access to the corral and the trotter bridge. So the gate is simply like a switch. So when I want to have pasture paddock two open, then I just chain the fence this direction. The pig is channeled this way. Obviously paddock one. Then we chain it on this side, and the pig is channeled that way. So, you know, not too bad. Just a just a little uh, three-foot gate and one post gives me the opportunity to kind of feel like a railroad conductor. I'm conducting, doing track switching there. So I like how that worked out. I think that's going to work out pretty fine. Again, if a pig wants to blast through it, he's going to blast through it. Uh, we're hoping to uh, make this the Shangri-La of boars that they don't want to take off all the time. <laughs> There's a snapping turtle down in that hole. I just... Caught him a little while ago, checking him out, little guy.
It is not heavy. <laughs> The snapping action here. Come on. Get him. <laughs> Just leave me alone, jerk. I hide up under that sycamore root. Mean sucker, though. So here's the part that I'm least excited about, and I swore I'd never do this, but here I've done it. Uh, this is obviously the creek crossing, our main creek through the uh, through the paddock. The trotter bridge is just right here behind me. So this is just a small, about a 20 foot area. Actually, it's about uh, 18 feet from the trotter bridge to here. The pigs can come right down the triangular paddock. They've got access to this little watershed right in front of the camera, access to the main watershed. So that gives them the opportunity to access water. Uh, this creek rarely dries up completely. So this will be a good source of water for them. But I didn't want to have electric over this creek crossing. I uh, didn't want to have electric this close again to the trotter bridge. The electric actually stops right over there. Um, I may regret that. I have this extra piece of cattle panel. It's cabled around both of these trees, this huge sycamore, which isn't going anywhere, and this tiny little whatever, can't even tell what that is, um, that it's anchored to. So th this may be an exercise in futility. I left the bottom unanchored, but it's wedged against the sycamore uh, stump and the sycamore root here. So when we get high water, there's going to be a lot of debris that dams against this, and it may just blast it, but I'm hoping it, it kind of does this number, opens up like a flapper gate versus tears everything out. Obviously, it's not going to tear that sycamore out. It may tear this little sapling, or it may break my cable, or just fold the cattle panel in half. But we'll see what happens. You know, it's not like we haven't had any rain around here to give us high water events, so we'll just have to see how that happens. Again, if a pig wants to go through that, he's gone through it. We just want to discourage him, kind of route him. Uh, one little thing we have are these little gaps. Cam and I will probably come back later and fill in these little gaps. Uh, there's a gap right here and a gap right there from where our electric ends and our tree starts. So I can scab some boards there if I want to just be super redneck. And same right here. My 16-foot uh, hog panel needed to be an 18-foot hog panel. So I've got a little gap here. So I can probably fill that in with just some scrap wood. Um, again, the whole plan is just to deter them. If they feel that they want to get on the other side, then they're going to get on the other side, whether it's electrified, whether it's solid wall. So, of course, here's the last little issue is if the pigs have access right here to this portion of the stream, then as they're moseying along, enjoying all this uh, creeping Charlie they love, eat like candy, they're going to just end up moseying up underneath this. The boars right now are small enough that they'll walk right under that. Now, give me about three more months, and they won't be. Um, but, if again, if they're desirous to go into that they will no matter what size so trying to figure out exactly how I want to put something under there again don't want to electrify it but um, I got to watch not make too much of a dam that just jerks the whole bridge out when the water comes up so I may just put a couple cables in there do something again just to deter we'll just have to watch well we won't bore you with the uh, gory details of filling in those gaps obviously that's just simple fill in uh, I, I probably will come back later and show what we decided to do with the bridge and when we test it, see how it works out. So the next step, the next video will be actually electrifying this paddock. What we've decided to do, we've, we've shared previously on a video a while back about the debate of whether I do 12 volt solar, run lead all the way from the barn. Again, the barn is 300 yards that way downstream. So do I run a hot line all the way up? Uh, somebody suggested even running uh, 110 all the way up the center of the valley. Yeah, if I had a couple extra thousand dollars laying around, I'd do that, but that ain't happening anytime soon. So we'll uh, we'll detail that. I've got a plan. <laughs> so we'll make sure we detail that in the upcoming video. All right, take care, everybody.